Hello everybody. Hi everyone. Just waiting for Poppy and Tim to join us. Hi Penny. So we're starting to see people joining us. Right, here we are. So we should be just connecting now with the forest in a second. Hello. How are you doing? Hi Tim. How are you? I'm good. It's working. It's definitely working at the moment. At the moment. Let's not say too much. <laughs> There's grey to... sky over there and there's blue sky over there. Okay, well, plan B is a cafe. But, oh my goodness, it's a dog. That's a Shetland pony. I couldn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't see it properly. Yeah. Funny. Yeah, look, there's... I know that, there, I know I, that Poppy's I'm, I'm there too, she? So just to say hello, Poppy, who is behind... Yeah, Amber. hi to Poppy. So credits to Poppy as well as, as Tim. Yeah, so... Um, Lovely, yeah, I've, I've, I've got a mask as well, but because we're outside, then I thought I'd kind of start without the mask. And if, we, if it gets kind of crowded or we go into a street where I'm a little closer to people, then I'll put the mask on. Okay, that's good. It's good to uh, get that clear with everybody. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. People are watching. Yeah. People are starting to filter in. So as they start to come in, just do a few quick introductions. So my name's Kate, and I'm the director of The Big Draw. Um, I am also involved with the Forest of Imagination, the House of Imagination and the Trustee role, and I also am involved with the John Roskin Prize, which we run at the Lord. But today, I'm delighted to be here with, with Tim Viner. He will tell you all about himself in a moment, and, and the reason that we're here. But before I go into a bit more of the reason we're here, because there's some quite layered partnerships going on, um, so I'll go in for the second, but Tim, do you want to give a quick introduction, introduce yourself, and then we can sure. context for what we're, we're attempting to do with this experiment today? <laughs> yes, I will do. I mean, I don't, what I can't tell, Kate, because you're super clear when I'm hearing you, what I can't tell, and it's a little bit blustery whether you, whether I'm going to sort of dip in, but okay. hopefully you can hear me okay at the moment. Um, the I've moment, got the sort of... I am hearing you absolutely fine. I don't Great. know about people on the call, so maybe we ask the question, people who are on the call, can you hear Tim okay? Might be a little bit blowy, but in oh. general. So I'll just carry on talking. So, yeah, so. Um, From my perspective, it sounds absolutely fine. Cool. All yeah, right, so we're in, we're, we're in, we're in, we're uh, in, we're in Bath, uh, you know, um, UNESCO World Heritage Site, City of Culture. If we just sort of turn the camera over there, then you've got the traditional kind of view of the city. You've got the Crescent, the Abbey. Roman baths and all the kind of landmarks that you associate with Bath but um, I'm also interested in the football stadium which is just in front of us. We're, we're at Bath City Farm at the moment and we're overlooking the football stadium and part of what um, I've sort of built up a kind of career doing is, is drawing and recording global sporting events. Um, World Cups, uh, Olympic Games, places where the global spotlight, uh, spotlight is on a particular activity. And I've used or I've, I've often used drawing as a way of telling the story of those particular I'm events. So sorry to him. Can you just speak a tiny bit loud? Yeah, okay. I will do that. It's absolutely fine, just maybe a little bit loud. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so what, I, what I'm. Um, a uh, big sort of global spotlight uh, sporting events are uh, always kind of captured in a million different ways and drawing is a way which you can tell tell the or, uh, you show the mood and the atmosphere of those events and i'm always interested in a particular place at a particular moment in time and at the moment we're in an extraordinary moment in time and the new football season has just started and we've got clubs like bath city fc that are in the sixth tier of english football that are playing essentially behind closed doors there are no fans like everyone else's um there's a game that's going to kick off at three o'clock today and i just wanted to sort of use drawing as a way of showing what that's like normally one hour before a football match there'd be fans gathering walking their way to the stadium and um building up uh, the atmosphere before a game and you know this is this couldn't be more different to a world cup 
semi-final in Russia where England are playing Croatia and you've got the world watching. But actually the narrative, the story is very similar. And so I've managed to use uh, drawing over many years to try and capture that, that story and publish that work through newspapers and magazines and, and other places. I also work at um, Bartosbar University in the School of Design, which again is just over there in the, in the, in the kind of valley that you can see there. There's a, there's a beautiful new campus, the Locksbrook campus, which was um, a former Herman Miller factory designed by Grimshaw Architects in the 70s. So it's you know, a bespoke 21st century art school campus. Um, and I work there as a professor of illustration. So um, I'm sort of big champion of drawing, really, and using drawing to tell stories. And we are very privileged to have you with us today, Tim. So Thanks. just in terms of the sort of the, the bigger picture to all of this, because I'm referenced some of the partnerships. So, so where to start? So the, the, the theme for the Big Draw, the charity I run, is very much one around uh, culture, uh, culture, climate change, sorry. So we're calling it the Big Green Draw, climate change this year. Um, we're also in the middle of a, an ongoing partnership with the Forest for Imagination, the Virtual Forest 2020. And today is also linking in with uh, the bigger picture uh, with TEDx Bar, who, whose theme is, is interconnected and who are going live after this on an hour with a, a bath focus on obviously the main TEDx global kicks off um, at four o'clock. So we're linking all these different themes together, but very much one of interconnected, interconnected with, but also narrating some of the things that, that Tim has just been referring to. Um, I think some of the main themes that are coming through the, the wider TEDx, safer, clear, cleaner, better, better living, more connected living. And I think p part of that is about more connected communities and the impact that I think COVID is having on on the community. And I think that's where you and I started to chat, wasn't it, Tim? Yeah, um, I mean, it, in terms you know, of it, about the impact on the grassroots community and using football. I have to say, Tim, as I know nothing about football, <laughs> that's OK, because we're using it as a sort of a metaphor. It's all right. Um, yeah. About as a metaphor, as sort of the, for the bigger picture about really what's going on out there in terms of the peril, the uncertainty, impact yeah. on grassroots community activity. And yep. what, as a microcosm, what that means to a local community. And, and obviously, Tim was going to be capturing some of that using his skill as uh, in raw portage and visual documentation. And the idea is, and I bear in mind to anybody watching this, is a bit of an experiment. And, uh, we've done tons of Instagram lives, but we haven't done one on the moon before, one like this. So we're hoping it's going to work. But the idea is that Tim is going to be walking along, doing a bit of sketching as way and me and Tim, so I can thread out a little bit more to tell you a bit more about, about him and his really very interesting uh, drawing practice that he had. Cool. Tim, do we need to say anything else about the partnerships? I don't think so. I think you captured everything there. Um, yeah, it's, I, I think those themes are, are kind of underpinning all those partnerships and, and really what, what, what today's about. I mean, I hadn't really thought about it so much today I, I kind of thought that this was a good place to start because it's on a hill with a great view overlooking the ground so we're starting in a distance and we and we're going to end up there but actually in terms of community you've got lots of people in the in the farm today because it's an activity where you can bring bring your family it's outside it feels like a place where you can actually uh spend an afternoon and it's uh yeah. it seems very nice you know and we're hoping, I think we'll touch on that as we go along this whole, you know, in terms of drawing, whether it's digital drawing or just drawing the pencil and paper and, and getting outside, getting out of that connection with nature and outside yeah. and, and drawing and capturing that moment. I think there's something there about well-being and health and being connected to the community, being connected to nature and using drawing as a tool to help with that. Yeah. So at the moment, I mean, just in terms so of the drawing. Yeah, so, so just in, let's have a look at what you've done so far. So I, I, I don't know whether you can sort of see this, but what um, I've can, just been yes. I've, I've been drawing here this morning. Um, I, I might even play back as a, a sort of video. So the history of the drawing, just testing a few brushes. I'm standing on a hill overlooking the ground. Just in the distance there, you've got a player who has actually come out. It's 40 minutes or so before kickoff. So they're kicking a the ball. They're warming up. But it feels very much like I'm on the outside because I've got to be on the outside. We've got it. We can only be observing this event from a distance, uh, from a hill beyond, beyond, beyond the pitch, where actually where I'd like to be is in those, in those blue seats. Um, but yeah, so this was just my first uh, attempt at a drawing of placing the football ground in and amongst the, uh, the environment at the top of the hill. 
and I'd carry on working on this drawing. And actually what I'm trying to do over the next hour is create a sort of drawing that represents the journey of that hour. So we're going to sort of walk through the park, uh, sorry, through the um, city farm, down to a park, across to Erton High Street and end up in the, at the turnstiles of the ground just before kickoff. And, and that's what I really like about drawing in this particular way, digi a kind of digital drawing uh, like this, is that I can record that journey. I can co continue changing the drawing and it will play back as an instant video afterwards. So you've got the history of that hour's experience um, captured in line and shape and colour. And I kind right, of really like that. Tim, I think you're using uh, Procreate for you. Yep. And obviously the, the iPad pencil to do that. People would like to know what you're what you're using yeah i mean i think okay. i've got I've, it can document I've, the changes it does a sort of like almost like an animation doesn't it you can play back and, which i think we right. are hoping to share as well um, yep a legacy piece after this and link up with uh, bath digital festival yeah it's a fine one i mean I, I've, I've sort of worked on location for many many years and um traditionally taken a sketchbook <laughs> and um oh look <laughs> I think like being in the picture. Um, wow. tr traditionally taking a sketchbook, drawing with pen and ink, uh, watercolours, gouache, traditional analog sort of materials, and then going back to a studio, completing that work. But you could only ever publish that work after the event. You could only um, put that work out there after an event. And something like, well, particularly with sports um, and, and kind of news, we want, we want our news in real time now. So the iPad was a, a way of, of being able to draw and instantly publish. So it was, it, you know, it was, a, it was a bit of a game changer in lots of ways. I'm certainly not a technical expert. Um, I know one or two uh, bits about the apps that I use, but I actually, I, you know, the, I'm using the technology because it's helping me uh, get those stories out there, not because I'm particularly sold on, uh, on, on the, this, this approach necessarily. I still value the analog traditional methods as well um it just it's just very appropriate for um, publishing work in real time and we can talk we, as we go along i think we can throw down a bit more can't we about that whole connection between analog and digital drawing and where they intersect illustration okay, so reportage illustration now, there's so a long line of who knows what will happen? Yeah, um, we're just going to. Well, we're going to we, we're going to sort of walk a little bit closer to the ground, I think. But um, I might just put my mask on if that's all right. There's a few people here. Yeah. <laughs> Got to be. Uh... Well, how's that going to work Absolutely. with headphones? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you still hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? All right. Good. Tim. Yeah, I can. <laughs> okay. So we're just walking through the park now, uh, the city farm now. Um, be, I could happily, I, I could happily stay here all afternoon. Actually, I mean, you know, what's not to like? Just, yeah. There's lo loads to draw. People enjoying themselves. It's a fantastic place to sort of be. But again, I think when you're working as an illustrator and you're working to a commission, you're trying, you're trying to build a story in that drawing. You've got to stay on that brief really and try and not get too distracted. So, if, if <laughs> Poppy, we sort of head down, head down the. Head down the hill and. Look, it's just, so, it's an experiment. It's all an adventure, Tim. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it, I think if it works on the move, I think at the big draw we'll do more of these on the on the moving Instagram lives if it works. Yeah. If people want to do them. With them. I mean, again, I you know I say I I often talk to sort of students about looking for boundaries in the projects that you're working on and what what are the limitations that are presented to you in each case and in many ways an iPad's got no limitations. You can do you can do anything. And you can keep on working on to the drawings. Amazing bit of technology. But what I like about working on location is there are a whole series of restrictions. There's, the, the, there's um, time frame. There's the weather, conditions. At the moment, it's, you know, it's a lovely day. It's quite cold. But um, you know, it might be in the middle of winter where you've, you've got to work quickly. And you've only got a certain amount of time to... Um, work because there's a particular event taking place so a football match lasts 90 minutes the build-up's going to be an hour and a half so you have to work quickly and I actually really like oh. the uh, the speed of that process and I think that was a big um, that was a big sort of um, 
learning moment for me, actually, that traditionally I always felt that you had to develop a drawing and improve a drawing and, and make it better before you committed it to, uh, to before you committed it to being published. And, um, oops, sorry. And what I like about this way of working is actually you're putting very raw work out there. You're putting very loose sketches full of mistakes, full of, um, uh, little moments that are captured very briefly, but I think that's really um, part of the story. And if you can get over that sense of not worrying about a, a mistake being included, actually, it's very liberating. Mm. I wanted one thing that we touched on the other day. I think um, is interesting. So obviously, the, the nature of your of your career in terms of going in, uh, documenting these sort of major sporting events. I think obviously things sometimes are. It's not always difficult to get in. It's not always. It's not always easy to get the permissions from the Oops. authorities, etc. And I'm really interested. Steady. In the that, oh, can you? Sorry. Yeah, I can, I can hear you. Yeah. On as you're on the move. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can. I can hear you. I just love this idea that drawing is. It sort of slips under the radar in a way. It's, I think the example that I touched on the other day, I forget the lady's name. I think she lives in America, but she's the one that goes into the arms dealers conference. Yeah. You know, she wears a smart suit and she just yep. goes a bit nonchalantly, you know, oh, hi, 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 goes in with her little note, her sketchbook, just sort of, oh, I'm just taking a few innocent drawings. And it, it, if somebody went in with a camera and documented that, they'd have been put out by security straight away. But there's yeah. something there about going in with just a paper, uh, paper and a pencil and documenting that, that somehow it, it, it slips through. And, and what the visuals, the documentation that comes out of it is, is no less impactful or, you know, for the, for the arms dealers, less incentive. Yeah, no, I mean, I think you're talking about... I, I wondered about... what you thought about, about that power well, of drawing. Well, I think, I think that's very, uh, that's a good example of how um, you can use, you know, you, ha you have to, you have to be in a position to capture whatever it is you're trying to collect. In, in, in this case, it's someone that wants to get access to a, um, an event that is controversial. It's, uh, it's got a certain amount of security around it. So she's had to behave in a particular way to um, give her access to, uh, to capture that. Yeah. And, it, and in, my, in, in, in the stuff that, that I've been doing, so I can't draw... Usain Bolt in nine and a half seconds, uh, bet any bet and do it justice in the, in the way that the television and cameras and, and video does. It does a you know, it, TV and, 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 and film does a brilliant job of documenting the, act, the actual sport. But what drawing can do is it can capture the, the mood and the atmosphere and the sense of what it's like to be at a, um, an Olympic Games in Beijing, for instance, that oh. sometimes doesn't get captured by, by the camera. It, it provides that kind of complementary story for that. And, um, and I think what, what you also have is, uh, what, what is often kind of unrecognized is the amount of planning that goes into making any of these sort of events happen. So if I know that there's a game taking place at three o'clock at Twerton Park, you know, there's been lots of conversations this week for us to be here for this hour to sort of try and capture that. And you, know, you, you sort of times that uh, uh, again when, you, when you're when you about to go to an Olympic Games where there are multiple events in multiple parts of uh, a country or a city. You need accreditation and permission to be there because there's a lot more um, concern around both security but also um, the rights of images, etc. So there's a huge amount of planning that goes into all of these events. But all of that planning, in, in, in some ways, buys you the freedom in the moment to just concentrate on what, whatever it is in front of you. And you have to be able to have that space. I don't want to be thinking about, have I got permission? Am I in the right seat? Am I going to the right? I just want to be recording, recording whatever is there in front of me at the time. And I think, you know, drawing is very versatile for that, I think. Um, I, was, I was having a conversation with somebody the other day who works in fashion and illustration. And we're having this sort of similar conversation as much as there's still it still doesn't happen very often but increasingly some of the big fashion magazines are now employing illustrators not just for the uh editorial in the actual magazine but even sometimes for the front covers you know rather than just having, yeah. rather than a photographer doing it um we were just talking about what it what is it that it that the, the, the drawing the drawing illustration offers and i think it's this idea of it it can better capture it or differently. I don't want to upset any photography. It's a different way of capturing it, isn't it? But in terms of capturing the, the line, the form or the essence of that particular moment, 
drawing can be incredibly powerful. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, we'll just go through this gate and then I'll, I'll get back on that subject. So it'll be a bit, it'll be a nicer view through here. So are you I think, making your way down? Yeah, so we're just making our way down towards the ground. Um, <laughs> um, Oh, this is this. Yeah. You see, this this is a really fantastic example of of what happened. I I didn't. So if we come come down here, so so here you've got the ground. We're a little bit closer to the football match. The football match is about to kick off in twenty minutes or half an hour. There's a kids playground here. We've got two young young guys kicking a ball um, outside of the ground. Oh, I can see them just yeah. Yeah, li living the dream, imagining their Arsenal versus Tottenham or whatever it might be. <laughs> But I kind of love the fact that, you know, that's exactly the kind of un, unplanned sort of moment that you can capture in a drawing. So, you know, I, I'm, I might not be here if I was a photographer. I might not have, uh, I might not have uh, walked to this, to this, this space. But, um... So there's been a, few, a couple of things in the chat. So somebody, I think Bookshelf Chronicles, yes, Let's Bookshelf Chronicles, just saying about questions. So we're not going to have a dedicated question section at the end or anything as such because we've got so much to get through with Tim and we have to get it in just under an hour. But please do put any questions you want in the chat and I will do my very best to pull them out and throw them into the conversation. Just going back to that point you had there, uh, Kate, before that I, that I didn't really sort of address, you were talking about um, photography, how photography captures an image versus how drawing perhaps captures a moment or a sequence of events. I think, you know, very often... Uh, I don't, I don't think it's a matter of either or. I think both are really valid um, activities, professions, etc. Of course, we know that. Um, but what I like about drawing is it might be uh, the accumulation of uh, a series of things that you're looking at that ends up on the page or on the screen. Uh -huh. Now, with a photographer, a photographer is spending as much time looking, observing and working out where they are going to actually point click the shutter but when they click the shutter essentially that's the moment that's that's what's mirrored back to you that's what's that moment is captured in that in that sort of moment when the shutter is um pressed whereas a drawing i might create a drawing now that's started up the top of the hill in the city farm now i'm in that kind of middle bit where i can see a couple of players there doing their warm-up drills i've got a couple of guys here um, underneath a basketball net kicking the ball around doing the kick-ups sort of experiment i'll include that in the drawing then i'll move on to the high street something else that will appear on the high street so it's that accumulated sort of narrative that i think drawing is so good at and you, you could argue that the same thing happens if you're taking film rather than video but i think it's you know when, when you're when you're drawing or when you're working as an illustrator it's it's you're editing and selecting the things that you want to include so there's there's lots in front of me there's clouds there's hills there's floodlights there's houses um, but I'm thinking those two guys kicking a ball, the players warming up um, and the and the edge of that um, stand, they're the things that I want to draw and everything else in some ways doesn't matter. It's the things that I want to draw. Is, that's what I that's what I put down on the page. So, Tim, we've got a question for you and it's okay. I'm curious why Tim presents his beautiful iPad drawings onto a blank sketchbook digital background. Sorry, can you just say that bit, the yep. first bit again then? So the question was, why does Tim present, thank you, I'm curious why Tim presents his beautiful iPad drawings onto a blank sketchbook digital. Ah, okay, yeah. So th th I think this is in relation to stuff that I put up on Instagram, where um, actually what I might do, I might just stop for a second if that's all right, um, because I think what, what, what's being referred to there is um, drawings that I make uh, in various museums and collections around the world. Uh, so if, if you're an athlete, I'll put that. If, if, you're a, if you're an athlete, you do all sorts of exercises to stay fit so that you can run fast, jump quick, play tennis, play football, whatever it is that you're doing. If you're a musician, you do scales. You, you, you learn the skills of your trade so that you can perform on the stage. And I think in terms of drawing, I use museums and collections when I could visit them. Now I'm looking a lot more online, but I will go to the British Museum, the Pitt Rivers Museum, Ashmolean, the Holborn, uh, the museums, the Bath at Work Museum, places that I kind of regularly go back to, to just draw and observe um, 
the collections and it's this th these are my scales these are my exercises this is the kind of thing that means when i'm commissioned to uh, go to a world cup and draw in that very stressful intense moment i've got the i've got the skills i've got the kind of um, ability to do that so i think what i tend to do is i draw in a sketchbook these, these are you know analog drawings using a brush pen and a fountain pen um and they uh, and i just recolor them to put them up on instagram so really it is a sort of digital collage but the original drawings are are made pen and ink so I, i'm 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 as much a fan of this traditional uh, drawing process as i am of uh, of working digitally does that answer that question so, I think if it, if it doesn't, well, they can type back in. Just for okay. thing, Tim. So, so just for people who have joined us, so you do. This is a lot of this is commercial work that you're doing. I think yeah. you maybe sort of dig down into that a little bit. Yes, happy to. Yeah. Be. And I think there's certainly a couple of others on the call that are working, you know, commercially on children's books. I think Dax draws was on earlier. Um, you know, what it means in terms of having that pressure, having to work for it, build everything else. I mean, it's interesting what I thought you were saying about how it is perhaps that it might be now, they might not be sending out asking for a whole team. They might be asking for an illustrator. Yes. But, um, I know that you've left some well, so maybe we can thread that in. And what people you can say that you were telling about some of the shifts that are going on out there. But yeah, so it went commercial. So, yeah, so the commercial thing, I mean, this is just, by the way, this is just a perfect scene here. I don't know where you can, but there's, you know, at the edge of a football ground, I've got a dad and his son having a kick about, done it many years with my boys. And, um, you know, that's an irresistible thing. got to try and capture that. So, yeah, the commercial side of things, um, this is something that I kind of try and uh, talk to my students about. Um, you know, I, I, I've you know, I've, I've been around a long time in terms of my career. I've worked for many years. Uh, I sort of, if I just unpick this a little bit. So I start, I, originally I studied painting. I started painting, started a painting degree at, um, in Newcastle. And then I transferred halfway through my degree because I wanted to work more quickly and I wanted to do a different kind of work. And I finished my degree in graphic design at Camberwell. Sort of a slightly disruptive undergraduate degree. I then went to the Royal College and, and studied illustration there. And I worked alongside, or I was taught by people like um, uh, Peter Brooks, Times, um, Sheila Robinson, Quentin Blake, Andre Klamowski, all very hugely talented um, illustrators that had this ability to get what was going on in their heads down onto their page and to tell those sort of creative stories that way. And I massively suffered from a kind of imposter syndrome because I just didn't work like that. That wasn't how I work the way i made sense of the world was to sort of draw what was in front of me and to tell that story of what i was observing in the world around me but i didn't know how to make a living out of that because traditionally the illustrator would be commissioned to provide content for existing sort of stories or they'd be providing images to go with it with a with a body of text so over the years i've found that reportage illustration the way in which you feed into particular stories stories that are pertinent to a particular moment in time if you're prepared to sort of generate that content you can take that content to uh, a newspaper or a publisher or a gallery and you exhibit and you sell and you generate an income from that content that you've generated so it sort of changes the balance of how i think an illustrator works and that i'm using it much more in a sort of journalistic way i suppose um, and i didn't really realize that i was doing that until you start to reflect on that but I do think that, um, you know, the commercial value of this work is partly having the ability to persuade a commercial partner, a client, that they should publish the work, you know, that it's a valid, that it's a valid thing. And when they have done that, it's, it's, it's always been a good, good thing. I want to just pick up one phrase that you, you used there, imposter syndrome, because I know this is something that, certainly something I hear a lot nearly as much not quite as much as the phrase i can't draw but, <laughs> um, which is another one but no imposter syndrome when i'm talking to artists or creative makers change makers this is something that i hear a lot that how people feel and you know quite often these are people coming people individuals like yourself who are you know very successful experienced have got you know lifetime of career behind them or have you know been incredibly successful very quickly and they might be quite young and they've sort of risen very quickly and yet 
they still feel this and i i mean often i mean often they will say it's because they feel that it's because they haven't maybe gone down the traditional route or they've been uh they're self-taught or they did they've come through maybe a slightly different avenue or for whatever reason they haven't felt um yeah yeah it, it's a very common theme i think it's very interesting well i think i think in my case i you know i i, I took it very you know traditional and uh, you know my my education was as as, as good as as good as it could be and you know, i was at some great colleges working with some fantastic people I was just struggling with my own sort of identity about where I wanted to, you know, what I wanted to do with the work that I was enjoying making. And every time I tried to make work like I thought I should be making it, like, like other people were doing it, it just didn't feel right. I didn't do it very well. So it just took a while for me to recognize that actually what I was doing was valid. And as you go through, as you, as, as you, um, actually drawing and talking, I realize is not very easy. Um, but uh, when you you know going going through um, when when you realise that the drawings that you're making do could have an audience, that it's it's worthwhile. It doesn't really make much sense there. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. Um, as you say, it's the uh, sort of multi-skilling, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I got caught up in drawing his added a short. One thing just to pick up on where you're when you're sketch you say when you're sketching is so Penny has just reminded me. So as I mentioned at the beginning, we. This, this is part of the sort of multi-layered partnership and one of those partners is linking with, with TEDx Bar and wider TEDx today. So if you do have time after this, do have a check out, check out TEDx Bar and maybe check out, if you look on both the, um, the Big Draw and the Forest of Imagination social media accounts, you'll see all the links there. But there will be lots of other linked content about interconnectedness, climate change, um, and the work that TEDx are doing. So if you get Absolutely. a chance to look there as well. Yeah, for sure. So what are you drawing at the Are you drawing the boys? I'm just drawing these two. I, um, I'm just drawing these guys. The, the stadium's there. You can see the uh, floodlights. He's got a, an England shirt on. So it's International Week. Again, in terms of, you know, if you're interested in football, if you're interested in sport, you've got a, an eight-year-old guy there with an England shirt on. Um, you've got grassroots football just behind, no fans allowed, no match day revenue for a club that's battling to survive. Uh, and, uh, in, and it's an international week in terms of the football season. So there's no Premier League games, and no games in the championship. Actually, what, what, you, what I've found at a lot of World Cups when I'm going to uh, Russia or I'm going um, wherever the uh, uh, Japan and Korea World Cup where you've got 20,000 uh, England fans travelling, a lot of those England fans are from clubs like Bath City. If you, if, if you support if you support a Liverpool or a Newcastle or an Arsenal or generally you're seeing fantastic football every week um, and you don't always uh, feel the need to follow England but it's, it's, it's these guys that end up going around the, around the world supporting um, England abroad I was you know my, my first overseas game yeah my first overseas game with a group of England fans working with the FA was um, an Azerbaijan away game. And the uh, newspaper, uh, the, the, the airplane was full of, um, you know, England fans from, you know, j just on, on this sort of weekend away in, in, in Baku, just to sort of see uh, England play football. It was a real, it was a real eye opener. <laughs> I've just had uh, a couple of comments. So Wilson has put a few comments. And so Wilson from Reba, who we've been doing quite a lot with recently, which is fantastic. So Wilson's been saying, great to see an iPad being used outdoors. And he's asking what app you're using. Uh, well, so I think it's on Procreate. Yeah. So the, the app's Procreate. About outdoors as well. I think that's an interesting one, you know, using an iPad outdoors and feeling comfortable with that. Yeah. Um, the, the iPad is a fantastic sort of tool for all sorts of uh, activities. We know that. And, and outdoor does present some challenges for it, particularly if you're working in extreme weather conditions. When it's hot, it's... Uh, it doesn't work very efficiently when it's cold the batteries run out very quickly um and you know but but it is a really you know it's a great way of capturing color shape line and mark all with a bit of kit that's very very sort of compact mm. when it's really bright there's a lot of reflection i remember drawing my way through the olympic games in um in london in 2012 that's kind of remarkable three weeks when london was transformed it, the weather was was great it was super hot every day yeah, it was it was an amazing time, but it was, you know, the the early version of the iPad was really hard to draw on. So I was always trying to find some shade somewhere where I where the screen was out of the sun, so I could draw. But um, 
And the app that I used then, the original sort of the first drawing app that I used was an app called Brushes. And it was oh. just what it said. It was just a simple uh, vector uh, drawing tool that had a series of brushes. And it was quite basic. And I liked that. And I, I do really like Procreate as well. But um, the more sophisticated the apps become, the more decisions you've got to make. And in a studio, when you've got all your materials around you, uh, that you, you've got time to make those decisions. But on location, you only ever take a small amount of kit with you. So I will only, you know, while I'm using Procreate, I only want to make a few decisions. What, what brush or what, um, what's my canvas size? How many layers do I want? Uh, and what color do I use? Mm. But beyond that, I don't really get involved in all the, all the brilliant things that the app can do. It, it, it I mean, does some very snazzy uh, things, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. Get into it. I mean, but I what I don't, what I don't one, want. But I, yeah, what, like you, I use it probably, I probably use like, I don't know, one hundredth of what it actually does. But so the balance that i'm trying to make there is or the, the balance that I, I think i'm trying to get and again this is a conversation that comes up with students a lot particularly students of design students is i'm i'm keen that the software doesn't drive uh the activity it enables the activity it facilitates whatever it is you're making but it shouldn't be driving it yeah. so uh you you, can, you you should and very often you can be just as effective with a pen or a pencil you might spend a bit of time choosing your favorite pencil and your favorite pen and just as you just as you choose your your favorite drawing app um but the software shouldn't really uh, determine what it is you're producing it's just facilitating it <clears throat> so, I mean, how are we how are we doing for time we're doing all right we've got about 20 just over 20 minutes left because um, i'm keen to get onto uh onto the high street just because i think that's that's where um that's well, where the, the story uh, about uh, yes where you would normally see lots of fans, you're yeah. not going to be seeing that. So and we're, also, we're nearly I'm there. I'm desperate for you to do a, a bovril drawing, and you all know what that means. Uh, yes. I uh, didn't however, <laughs> however, look, the thing is, the ground's not open, <laughs> so there's no there's no bovril van. That's the whole point. That's why we need a drawing of some bovril. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you, you can have a cup one day, hopefully oh. soon. So you're making your way down to the high street? So we're going to be we're coming down to the high street very soon. So just you can see the floodlights in the background. So not, again, normally here, let's let's say a, a team like Bath City would have four, between 500 and 1,000 fans. Uh, we're going to head down this way, 500 to 1,000 fans to a game. Doesn't sound like very many when you've got 70,000 at Old Trafford, but um, they're fans that are from their community. They're at the heart of their community. And this is where they're beginning to think about okay that it's bath city versus billericay today so a conversation along this bit of ground will be what's that new striker like from billericay is he going to score today and there's that sort of conversation going on and and again I, I, that's the stuff that i like to draw pre you know before a match but there's no one here you know there's no one here which is it's just so sad <laughs> And I know that some of the markers, the places that you were hoping, I mean, obviously we're dependent on time, but we were talking yeah. about some of those, those spots, like the pub, you know. Oh, are you still there? You disappeared throw... very briefly. Yeah, you something? just disappeared very briefly there. Uh, yeah, so, you know, places like the pub and the, the chip shop, those sorts of things. Yeah, we're just Which, coming up to and... those now. Have you got any bars there? Sorry, Kate, we're just struggling, I think, a little bit here with them. Um... Don't worry. Oh, no, I can hear you. OK, so what I'll, I'll, we're just going to get to uh, Twert and Chippy, the number one Chippy in Bath that's closed down, which is a shame. Uh, there's a pub called the Old Crown. Again, that'll be a place where you'd meet pre-game, pre-match, maybe talk about the performance at the end of the game. But it's that, that's at the heart of community football, you know. Um, and uh, I, my feeling is that we're fairly quiet today. So would you ordinarily, would you be regularly going to the... No, not really. I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm missing live sport massively. I would um, normally be going to see a variety of games all over, uh, all over the place, actually. I go to as many as I can, but um, I'm just, I'm just sort of, yeah, I'm, I'm just missing that at the moment. But I'm aware of, you know, this is coming up to three o'clock on a Saturday. Uh, that's, that's the time when 
I think I start to think about sport. So if I'm walking down a high street, I'll be thinking about who's playing, where, what are they doing? And, you know, so this is a, you know, a little drawing that I made of the chippy just early on. Um, I'm just, it's not finished yet, but you can, I don't know if you can see that. We'll put them on social. I will share them, yeah, for sure. So Penny's saying um, you should make a documentary about all this. Yeah. Well, funny you should say that. Um, on the call, because... give us a ring. <laughs> well, the, the, there's a, um, when I was in Russia for the World Cup in 2018, I shared part of the journey with a photographer, a guy called Stuart Clark, who's made a brilliant sort of history of um, football grounds. And we shared part of our journey through, through Russia. So he was capturing the World Cup through the lens of his camera and I was drawing my way through it. I was working for the Telegraph and, um, and you know, we've had lots of conversations about this unique moment in time. You know, what, we should be recording that. There will never be another season like this. There will never be another sort of football season like this, hopefully. So, um, so someone needs to capture it. So we're about to... so, yeah, we're on a very narrow pavement, just heading down to Turton High Street. So we'll be there in a minute. <laughs> um, and ongoing thanks, obviously, to Poppy, who's there in the background. Yeah, sterling job. So you can see again, that's a lovely, lovely little view of the, of the terrace. The floodlights in the background. Oh, yeah. So again, we're, we're rushing things a little bit today. So I might, uh, I would, let's say, if, if, if I'm producing something um, for a particular event on a particular day, I might, um, I might spend three or four hours drawing uh, the story, the build up to, a, to any particular game. We're trying to sort of condense that into an hour today. So I've met, I have sort of this morning, nice I did go out. And, yeah, I, I, I did. Um, I sort of did a couple of drawings on my way in this morning, just to sort of, that I'll finish off and, and sort of work, work on uh, before I, um, I, I, I share it all with you. How are we doing? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Good. We're doing okay. So, so very this, well. this, we yeah. So we, feedback. <laughs> It's fan so, you're doing so, fantastically well. One of the things so, I wanted to sort of thread in, so it's just going back a little bit to um, when you were talking about, you know, when you were doing, you went to Campbell, but it was all a bit all over the place, wasn't it? One of the things Crossover, that we, we, we talked a bit about was you basically said that you were, you couldn't sit still. <laughs> you, couldn't, <laughs> yes. you, couldn't, you couldn't sit still, fidget, fidget, fidget. And actually drawing as a tool. Just come over here, Bobby, actually. Focus. Just... Might be a bit more sheltered. Um, yes, you're right. Um, that whole it's that whole haptic thing. There's something about the having that in your hand and it helps focus. And you know that almost you go into the pen or the pencil and it just calms it all down and helps you focus and connect with what you're doing around. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I can't quite sort of uh, explain that, but it, it is odd. You know, you go to uh, you, you know if 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 if, if um, if you had said to me that you go, you've got three hours to um, capture the Olympic Park where the, the whole world is watching and you, it's going to be published in a national newspaper on, on, a, on a wraparound cover, I'd have, I, you'd have, I'd have panicked. I I'd have, wouldn't have been able to do it. I like felt really stressed. And, yeah. and actually, when you, when you, if you, all the stuff around it is quite stressful, but you trust all that planning, you trust all that... Um, all that uh, work that you've done previously, the visits to the museums, the figurative drawing, the, 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 the kind of preparation that you do, so that when you're actually there for that three hours and you open up your sketchbook or your iPad and you start drawing, suddenly I relax. It just makes me feel kind of like all that other stuff goes away. And, and, and you're right. I mean, I, I found my way to art school. I didn't really... I didn't really... Play. Um, I think that's because as you say i was um i was always on the move i was always jumping around and running around and i thought i was good at sport but i wasn't that good so uh, i carried on drawing and in the end i ended up at art school <laughs> no i thought i wanted to be a runner <laughs> but um but yeah um so i've always but had I that interest 
I think that also links in a bit what we were talking about the day about in terms of, of travel, because obviously you're sort of like your your desire to be moving all the time or doing stuff, doing stuff. So I mean, obviously you have done a lot of traveling as well. And yeah. I mean, I was I suppose I was wondering in terms of well, not just not really just COVID, but thinking more about Brexit and young people now. I mean, when I was when I was young, people you people would go into railing and yeah. they would do it and easily. And you know you could take a sketchbook, and you could have the most incredible experience and document that journey. But it, it's going to be quite as easy now in terms of that no. movement um, no. for young people. So it'd be interesting to see how that all pans out over the next few years. But no, but you're right. But that, but that wonder, part. that wonder loss was a big part of what is allowing me to do what I'm doing now. Actually, you know, the, that 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 sort of that fearlessness that I had early on to sort of just go somewhere. Every time I got a little bit of money together from whatever project I'd been doing, I would plow it back into my business, if you like, by going away. I would travel somewhere. I'd go to a place of interest. I'd go to Beirut or I'd go to China when it was opening up. But I always tried to find a place that was at a particular moment, uh, a crossroads of its history in some way. So there was a story to tell from that place. And... Um, and so, and, and it was, it was from those sort of early sort of traveling experiences that I also managed to uh, funnel my interest in sport into my work a little bit more. Yeah. Because everywhere I went, whether I could speak the language or not, I would always end up playing football with a bunch of kids in a park somewhere or in a car park. And that became the basis of a children's book that I made. And, and, and from that, I thought, actually, you no know, sport and art go together. And, mm. you know, and I've been doing that ever since, really. I mean, obviously, I know that your, I think your official title for your uh, Bass Bra, is it Professor of Illustration? That's right, yeah. I mean, so, I would say, I mean, just from chatting to you over the last week or so, Tim, I mean, for me, you're a storyteller. Yes. Across lots of different mediums, you know, the, the, the desire to travel, the, that, that, that absolutely compelling desire, you were saying, you know, something happens something kicks off somewhere you want to just go there you're not totally. going to think about it too much you're going to get there and because you want to document it and we want to capture that moment and i think yeah. that's that's quite a unique not unique but it's quite a special trait personality trait i think it'd be good to talk a bit more about that and whether you think that maybe more people should be a bit willing to yeah, I mean, I think the, the storytelling side of things is, is really at the heart of, of, of this practice. Not, I mean, there's lots of people doing this. You know, it's not, not unique to me, but I, I do think... Um, sorry, Pop, I'm walking a bit quick now. <laughs> We're getting close to ground. I don't want to miss kickoff. <laughs> um, the, uh, the storytelling thing is, is hugely important. And, and the, one, the one thing that really sort of struck me, going back to the Olympics in London, was as part of the media accreditation, I was put up with the journalists who were writing the copy, not with the photographers that were documenting the images and pictures. So the work that I was doing with the newspaper was seen alongside the writers as opposed to sitting alongside the photographer, which I thought was really interesting. So it does become a kind of journalism, a kind of storytelling. And I think that, yeah, I mean, that does underpin the practice. Uh, you know, I in the end a drawing of a pub called the old crown is a drawing of a pub and there's some interesting people walking by but unless it's attached to a narrative or a story it has yeah. to be context yeah. and the context really is that that flat that that pub should be full of fans and um and it's not no. No. we're getting close to the ground now and is it I'm in on, sight yeah and i'm looking out for some a Bovril van, but we may not find one. <laughs> I'm just desperate to be able to find a couple yeah. or a Bovril of some sort. Okay, oh, so we, Instagram, uh, that's all it is. And we've also been really lucky with the weather, actually, because um, I know, I know. So it, it looks to me like it's going to chuck it down in a minute, but it's all right. It's been good so far. Yeah, so lucky. And I was worried we'd have to decamp, or you'd have to decamp to a cafe or something. So, yeah, so... So we're That's just going to wander up here, but actually, Poppy, first, if you just have a look at this. <clears throat> so this is, a, again, I like, when you're on a high street, and, and the high street's got the kind of soul and the, and the personality of, uh, of the area, and this is a, a kind of display in a bashed-up old shop shop, but it's talking about the, 
development of this street in relation to the football club and how the football club's at the heart of that development. So there's, the pl there's plans to redevelop this whole area. And this is just a little display about that. And again, as a, you know, what you could, you could say, what's that got to do with um, the football match today? But actually, you, that, that's just, to me, that's, that's just as much a part of the story of what's happening in this area as the ground itself and the, and the activity at three o'clock. So, that, you know, what you, I think at the beginning, Kate, you said you don't know anything about football, you're not, mass you're not, you're not massively interested in football, but actually you don't have to be to uh, feel part of the but story, I, mean, I don't the think. cultural narrative around this. So when you were saying to me on the phone today, but what if I did it in this way? And I said, oh, no, that would be interesting. Yeah, oh, so they are, let I'm, that's interesting, actually, because here yeah. there, are some, there are some fans coming in. So uh, it looks oh. to me like um, there's a kind of... Uh, they are letting a few fans in, so uh, that's interesting. Yeah. So I, if I stand around here, you can see the you can see the ground. So traditional turnstiles, um, fans are being let in. I'm guessing they've got pre-organised tickets. Um, and you can begin to hear that. Can you pick up the tannoy a little bit? Can you get a sense of? Can you hear anything in the I background can't there? Really no. Okay, so you can, I can just hear a tannoy with people in, introducing uh, players and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so normally those five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, those boarded up turnstiles, that would be where you go through and cross the line and you're, in, you're into the game. So. Oh, Tim, I can really feel your sadness. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Really? Yeah. Well, well I, the thing is, I, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a, football's at a bit of a crossroads and. Um, the hope is that I don't want it's, this isn't a polit there's no attempt to make this political anyway but I, but I just think it would be great if fans could get back into the ground as soon as possible give these clubs a bit of revenue back and um, and uh, you know I think I think it would be it'd be great for all of us if that could happen but that's uh, it's a controversial uh, question I know anyway Are you going to do a little? I think you want to do the turnstile. Yeah, I might. I might actually just go up and ask them what they're what they're up to. Um, yeah, no go, dude. That'd be interesting. See what they say. Uh, hi there. Uh, how many fans are you letting in today? Oh, is it? I, thought, I just thought you were letting a few in. That was all. So, you, okay, got that. I thought that was okay. Yeah. No, there's no fans going in. It's just uh, uh, they're, they're they're part of the organising group. So. I thought it was behind closed doors game. So. So what are you going to sketch for us now, Tim? Yeah, only officials, media, and uh, league official data. And how long is that going to go on for? How long for, do you think? Three months. Three months minimum. You think, yeah. But the league's up and running. Second game now. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Thanks. So I so I came here early. I just I think this is a really iconic stand. It's got a great sort of logo of Bath City at the end. That that that, um, that sort of brown building there is, is is the bar, and these are the turnstiles. Very old-fashioned, traditional community ground. So I'll just after we finish here, I'll just stay finishing this drawing, and um, okay. I'll send it to you at another time. I mean, I think that the uh, turnstiles are such a um, iconic image, aren't they? Yeah, 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 for sure. You know, you know. Once you've gone through, once you've gone through the turnstiles, you know, you know that everything changes. So we've got probably about five minutes left, Tim. Okay. Just to round things up. So, if I ask people on the call again, if anybody has any questions for Tim, and if and Tim, just to you as well, to start just as we start to slowly round things off, do you have any? Do you have any tips, any advice? I mean, I suppose if you were, if you were talking to yourself back at <laughs> 18, would you have any advice to your younger self? Yeah, that's, that, that's a good question, isn't it? I mean, it's, you know, high sight is a brilliant thing. And if I sat, I think I've said it earlier on in the hour today that the best decisions possibly in life make themselves and if you sit and think too hard about things then you're probably um, struggling to make the right decision so on the one hand I wouldn't change anything but in reality I probably 
I wish I could slow down a little bit and I wish I could take my time around projects. But actually, it's that fearless sort of speed that um, that has got me into situations that uh, I would never normally be able to get into because I've not I've not said no. So I'm sort of sitting on the fence a little bit there. But, um, my, you know, it's not a huge amount of change. I just like to sort of um, take my time a little bit more, perhaps. I think I think the other thing also is that um, sometimes you have to. It's, it's it's very it's very easy to miss opportunities when they present themselves to you. So I think um, quite early on there were things that I was I was doing that I was I wasn't I wasn't spotting them as opportunities. It's only after you've done it three or four times that you realise that there's a there's the potential for a career or there's potential for a way of working here and. Um, so spotting opportunity opportunities is a, is a, is an important thing. I'm just hearing a round of applause from the from the um, officials that are in there. So the players are just uh, just coming out. Oh. Any other? Yeah, tips? I mean, I, yeah. So sorry. Yeah. So um, no, in terms of tips, I think. Um, don't what whatever materials you're using don't don't just stick with one kind of material continue to experiment continue to explore different uh, kinds of materials because if you rely on any one 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 thing whether it's a piece of software whether it's a bit of kit it's it will always change so you have have a multiple multidisciplinary approach to the materials that you're using and don't be frightened of mistakes mistakes are good yeah you know absolutely absolutely key that that kind of fear factor of it's not a good drawing. I'm not doing this yeah. in the right way. Just, just doesn't matter. Keep doing it. Don't, don't test yourself too hard too soon. Such a common thing. We hear that all the time. I think um, it's the whole thing if we're doing an event. You get the grown-ups coming in as well as the kids. And well, we used to have in real life events. This one. And yeah. Yeah. Lots of the the grown-ups would hang back, and you could see they sort of did want to have a go. There's like you know this big white sheet of paper or something. Yeah. And the are in them, and they'd need to be encouraged. And sort of come over and and almost be be given permission. So it was almost like one of the team give them permission, and they're like, "Oh, am I allowed to draw?" I'm like, "Yeah." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Started, get into it. So I mean, that that's something that we see a lot. I and mean, the other thing I just wanted to pick up on what you were saying in terms of, I mean, it's a massive thing for artists at the moment. It's, it's just knowing the value of your work as well, you know, and, and sticking to that because there's there's far too much ripping off of of artists yeah going on out there and um well i mean yeah stop. i mean we <laughs> need to stop no but i think well, it's, it's we're, really we're talking on instagram do everything sorry for free and let people you know but it, yeah. you should value yeah, and we're, we're talking on Instagram now. It's a fantastic uh, platform, especially at the moment. It's really helping us sort of stay connected. But it's also a place where you can just see so much, see so much uh, stuff. And um, I'm going to say, yeah, I don't know whether Zav is on, on uh, is, is joining this conversation. Zav's a, a great illustrator. He kind of works in, in, in Hong Kong. And I remember him saying once, you know, you, um, you, you go to... Sorry, you, we've got you, about one minute left. Sorry. Okay. Well, he, he was saying he's saying go to art school to get a philosophy, not a style. And I think actually you can go to Instagram to get a style, but you go to art school to kind of learn who you are and what it is you want to do, or you know. And I, and I think uh, you're right. There's so much that we can kind of see and and copy. And I think you know what whatever activity you do, eventually you're just trying to find out who you are and what kind of work you want to make. And and if you keep doing it, you will find that. Trust that process. Trust that process. Trust yourself. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I think we're going to have to sign off now, Tim, because we've got like a minute. And otherwise, if I don't save it now, it won't save. But one, one, thanks one, to you for being fantastic. one question to you, Kate. First, the technology work. One question for you, Kate. Before we go, what's the score going to be today? Yeah. What's the score? Yeah, what's the score going to be today between Bath City versus Billericay? You're asking somebody who knows absolutely nothing about football. Think of two numbers. Two numbers will do. Two numbers under ten? It could be. <laughs> okay. Um, two five. Two five to Billericay and away win. Okay, you won't be very popular <laughs> here. <laughs> All right, we shall see.
<laughs> All right, lovely. Listen, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Poppy, for doing a fantastic job. Yeah, thanks, Poppy. Lots of people saying about your fantastic camera. Thank you to everybody and Forrest and Big Draw and TEDx and everybody. We have to go now, but everyone, hop onto the uh, TEDx stuff now. Have to go before we get cut off now. Thanks, Tim. Share the pictures. Will do. I will do. Bye. Bye.